Hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about a very interesting public address amplifier that I bought way back in the mid 1990s and I always found it very useful and very handy. It was a piece of gear that I definitely got a lot of use out of. But before I get into that, I just want to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. I post new tech reviews every week and it won't cost you anything. There's no obligation on your behalf, but every time someone subscribes to my channel, it really helps my channel grow and it's really appreciated. So I thank you very much for that. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about this PA amplifier that I bought in the mid nineties at Radio Shack. This was the realistic MPA 95. And to just give you a bit of a background, Back in the mid 90s, I, I ran my own small business. I ran my own DJ business. I used to provide DJ services for weddings, anniversaries, office parties, uh, private functions, that sort of thing. And the realistic MPA 95 worked very, very well for me. Uh, I used it for a stretch of a few years and uh, it always worked very, very well. And it was a 100 watt amplifier and it was 100 watts RMS at four ohms. And in general, this amplifier was very sturdy, very reliable, and very versatile. And actually, one of the things that I loved about this MPA95 amplifier, it had a handle on it. On one end, there was this handle, and it made the amplifier very portable, which is something I really loved. Uh, it had plenty of power, so I'm just going to describe to you uh, what was on the front panel of the MPA-95, starting on the left. So basically you had inputs for four microphones, and it was standard quarter inch inputs or XLR inputs, but I'll get it more into that when I describe the back of the amplifier. But on the front you had your uh, dials that controlled the volume of the four microphones, and actually the fourth dial over was switchable. You could use it for either microphone number four or for a phono input. And there was also a fifth dial that can control the auxiliary input. And uh, auxiliary could have been a CD player, a cassette deck, whatever. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. There was also a feedback filter, which was really useful. So basically, if you were talking into your microphone and uh, if there was any sort of feedback coming through the system, you could turn that button to cut back and the feedback filter would cut the frequency from between anywhere from 300 to 3000 hertz. And I remember using it a few times and uh, it always seemed to work quite well. Uh, you had a lighted power meter at the top. Uh, Continuing to go to the right, you had your master volume, and the master volume knob was huge. I loved it. It just had a real nice feel. It was uh, very pleasing and uh, to the touch. And right above the master volume, there was a little light for clipping. So if your uh, amplifier was being overfed, if the signal was getting a bit too hot, that clipping light would light up. And uh, over on the right, you had your power button and you also had a monitor, which was basically for headphones. Now on the back of the MPA-95, and again, I'm going to start over on the left, you had a couple of posts for wrapping the power cable around, and there was a post to the left and a post to the right. And again, when you were done using your amplifier, you could wrap the power cable around those posts. Right beside the left post was a fuse socket, and then immediately to the right of the fuse socket were your outputs for your speakers. And it was bare end connections. And basically you had your COM, your 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm, and 70 volts. Now, just to the right of that, you had uh, your inputs. So you had an in and an out, which you could use for EQ, and you could also bypass that. And you had a mix bus and also an auxiliary input. Now the strange thing about the auxiliary input, uh, there was only one input, which I always found a bit annoying. Uh, because there was only one input, you could only run a mono signal into it. I always wish 
that you could have a stereo input for the auxiliary, both a left and a right. You do have a left and a right input for phono, and right above the left and right phono, there's a screw for your ground connection. And again, as I mentioned earlier, your fourth input was switchable. You could choose to use that fourth input for a fourth microphone, or you could use it for the phono input, which again was in stereo. And then over as we go further to the right were your inputs for your microphones. There were four, and again, you could choose between quarter inch or XLR, which really made it quite versatile. And just to go over a few more specs for the MPA95, uh, it had 70 volt line output. As I mentioned, it had a lighted power meter and LED clipping indicator. The frequency response was between 60 to 20,000 hertz, plus or minus three decibels. And the power requirement was 120 VAC at 60 hertz. Now, as I mentioned, I love this amplifier a lot. I did end up selling it. And you may be wondering, well, if you loved it so much, why did you sell it? Well, unfortunately, it was one of those situations where I was quite hard up for money. I was quite young at the time. Uh, I don't even recall if I was working at the time. I may have been unemployed. So I think I was a little bit hard up for money and I ended up selling it. And I believe I sold it to a person who used it for... A, a motorcycle racetrack. They needed an amplifier to run the public address system at a most, uh, motorcycle racetrack, I think. And having said that, this PA would be excellent for that kind of situation. Any kind of public hall, a bingo hall, anywhere where you would need a public address system. And I'm sure even a grocery store back in the day could have used this amplifier or even a small department store could have used this amplifier for their public address system in the store. So if you happen to come across the MPA95 secondhand, I would highly recommend picking it up. And certainly if I ever come across one again, I think for old time's sake, I'd probably pick it up because again, it was just a fun machine to use. You can easily find the manual for this amplifier online. And right now I'm showing a picture from the 1994 Radio Shack catalog. And back at that time, it sold for $220. Now, if you adjust for inflation, $220 in 1994 in today's dollars would be about $400. So it's definitely a great machine, definitely a good investment. I actually used to use this thing to make mixtapes. I always loved the fact that it had a built-in mixer. That was, I think, one of the big reasons why I bought the thing in the first place. So again, a really cool mixer and definitely one that I would recommend that you pick up if you find one secondhand. Thank you for watching. Hope you can join us again next time. As I mentioned before, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.